Welcome, welcome, Sabbath morning. Now we rest from every care. Welcome, welcome, is thy dawning. Holy Sabbath day of prayer. I guess flight interests you. It does, and you know that, that whole thing of my parents meeting uh, during the World War II, and she was a this airline stewardess. And, Wait, are you Mormon? You know, I technically am, but not never been a practicing Mormon. I was born in New Jersey. But my dad was from Salt Lake. I grew up in Salt Lake. Huh. Yeah. Salt Lake City, Utah. Tom Judd is a 58-year-old artist whose work I've admired for 30 years. I finally got a chance to meet him in person on March 25, 2011, when I drove from Ocean City to a studio in the Frankfurt section of Philadelphia. I knew he is a terrific artist, but had no idea what a fascinating guy I was about to get to know. For one thing, he is a direct descendant of one Jedediah M. Grant, a.k.a. Brigham's Sledgehammer. Grant was the first mayor of Salt Lake City, Utah, who in 1856 was sent by Brigham Young to bring wayward Mormons back into the fold. This was Heber. This was my father's grandfather, my great-grandfather. He was president of the church for 30 years, Mormon church. Um, he was a great man. I mean, I never met him, obviously, but... Um, and you, you probably have lots of relatives running around that oh, you don't yes. know because... Oh, had... my gosh. We used to go to the Grant reunion, and we would literally go to a high school auditorium for the Grant reunion, and finally it, they outgrew that. And now I think they have them in football stadiums. I don't know, I haven't been to one. Young Mormon guys are called elders and they're sent to do missionary work. When Tom's father went on his mission, he went to New York City and promptly lost all belief in the faith. So Tom himself was not raised religiously. And in fact, when he was 18, he tried to get excommunicated by the church. His dad said, I got to work with these people. So as far as officially leaving the church, Tom decided to cool his jets. Growing up, we had a cabin up in Utah, so the landscape has always been a huge deal to me. And I think moving to the East Coast, I'm sort of permanently homesick for that landscape. So I sit around and paint it here in this studio in the middle of the Northeast Philadelphia. Most of my paintings are of Utah. The landscape is of Utah.
I became interested in, in art when uh, my parents moved from Salt Lake City to Winneka, Illinois. And my father was hired to help plan the 1960 Republican convention that elected Richard Nixon to run against Kennedy. And we moved to Winneka, Illinois, and Chicago was where the convention was. So they put me in this school, in this little school, and I was just shell-shocked. I was just traumatized beyond belief. It was second grade, I think. I was supposed to be in third, but I didn't pass, or they, whatever, didn't cut that. I ended up in second. So then, even in second, I was struggling. So they put me in remedial reading with adults in somebody's house, and totally, I, I thought I was retarded. I mean, I really, I just thought, okay, that's great, I'm retarded, okay. So it, that's when I became an artist, because I started drawing to sort of escape and have my own little world. Because the world was getting really crazy. I mean, you know, first they moved from Salt Lake. Now I'm in this remedial reading class with adults in somebody's basement. Oh, this is really getting bad, you know. So anyway, I used to sit around and, and carefully draw these little battleships and put thousands of guns. And all the kids would come over to see it. And I thought, okay, this is what I do. I draw these pictures. Really, and that's when it began. And that, from that moment on, I loved art. And I loved visual stuff. And I loved drawing. And so that's really, yeah. Tom eventually overcame his academic shortcomings and while attending the University of Utah, met the artist Raphael Ferrer. I love Raphael Ferrer. He was teaching at PCA then. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go where you're teaching. <laughs> and that's what I did. And we became really good friends. We were really good friends for a while there. He, you know, he, he was great. Tom earned his art degree and began his professional career with a bang thanks to an overabundance of chutzpah. I have to tell this story because this is sort of the beginning of my art career. I called Anne Harnacorder on the phone and said, you've got to see my artwork. This is two years out of art school. And she, of course she tried to like get me off the phone. Well, I, I just would not be denied. So um, finally she agreed to meet me. On this rainy day, I turn up at the museum back entrance. I was soaking wet, I had my little portfolio. And I said, I'm here to see Anna Harnacourt. <laughs> and he's like, of course you are. And uh, so he calls her. So she comes down. She meets me in the coat room. She looks at him right there in the coat room. And she goes, oh, they're pretty interesting. And she makes some suggestions. And, I, and she said, well, let me show them to Ann Percy, who was head of the drawing and printing department at the museum. She said, can you leave me slides of them? So I gave her some slides. She said, I'm going to show them to them. To make a long story short, six months later, I get a call from Ann Percy. She and Frank Goodyear are putting together a show called uh, Contemporary Drawing, Philadelphia. And I end up in that show at the Philadelphia Museum and they end up buying a piece. And I was like 25 years old. So that was kind of the beginning of my art career. And then at that point, I'd been going to galleries, trying to get galleries interested. Nobody was interested. But as soon as people found out about the, that I was in that show, that just busted it open. And all of a sudden, I had a gallery and I had some articles and magazines. And it was amazing. During the afternoon that I spent in Tom's studio, I was really taken by the breadth of his creativity. And then I asked him, what kind of music do you like? He told me he listens to all kinds, from jazz to classical, but that he has a particular love for old-time country music. And the next thing I knew, this was happening. Put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. Let's pretend that we're together all alone. I'll tell the man to turn the jukebox way down low. And you can tell your friend there with you, he'll have to go. You can say the words I want to hear when you're with another man. Tell me, do you love me? Yes or no, darling, I will understand. Put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. 
Let's pretend that we're together all alone. I'll tell the man to turn the jukebox way down low. And you can tell that friend there with you, he'll have to go. Tom's art is mysterious and beautiful. It is like a palimpsest of lived experience. Layers of time scraped through and reused. He is obsessed with the past, especially the America of his childhood. There is a melancholy take on life in Tom's work. That feeling of, you know, when you find something in an attic and you're looking at a picture and all of a sudden you have that sensation that you're going to be in a box in an attic someday. It's not really, it's not a bad feeling. It's just like you kind of get the whole sort of tragic nature of life. <laughs> I want him to be left with a sense of like the fragility of life, the mystery of it, um, the poetry of it. I, I, I really think of myself as I create these almost like little poems about things, not verbal but visual poem, poems where I combine different materials and the way they play off each other is kind of the way words play off each other in a poem. I don't want it to be nostalgic, just that sense of loss, that's what it is, that sense of loss. I love that. I think that's the essence of life, kind of, is loss. Like, you have it, and then you lose it.